Hello everyone. In this presentation, you will learn the basics of using PowerPoint and important information on conducting your in-class or online presentations. Knowing what the requirements for your assignment are will help you stay on track as you create your project. There are different guidelines for different kinds of presentations. If you're doing your presentation live and in person, it's very different compared with recording something for online viewing. Knowing this at the start of your project will let you choose the best methods to use for your project. Not all backgrounds are created equal. Some will make your presentation feel unprofessional, your text could be hard to read, or the feel just doesn't fit what your presentation is about. PowerPoint comes with a lot of backgrounds and design options built in under the Design tab, but you can use your own images quite easily too. If you choose to use a built-in design, it will affect your whole presentation, not just the one slide you may want it on. Designs also affect your font and colors too but you can edit all of them to your liking. If you want a certain background on a single slide, right click on the slide and choose the format background option. And a menu of options will appear on the right hand side of your screen. Remember that you and your information should be the focus of the presentation, not your fancy, cool or flashy background. Boxes will always draw your audience's attention. You can use them for related quotes or possibly as see source X for more information about the topic. They even work for sidebars that you are not going to cover, but your audience may have questions about. For example, if your presentation is about roof design, including a box with links to more info on skylights is related and possibly useful to your audience, but it may not be a key point for your presentation. Boxes do not need to be square. You can use any shape as a box. You can even choose word balloons, which work well for quotes. Borders can be tricky. If you're going to use one, it is best to add it to your slide first, because this saves you a lot of trouble with object alignments and send to back commands later. Using shapes for borders means you never have to leave PowerPoint and they're easy to adjust if you need to. You can use images, which gives you more options, and you can use all of the image editor options in PowerPoint on that image too. Just like boxes, borders will draw your audience's attention. Use designs that fit your presentation. Otherwise, as the birdies told you, you may distract the audience from the purpose of your presentation. You can use the borders throughout your presentation as decoration or on a single slide for emphasis of that slide's top. This slide looks far more professional than the last one. Careful pairing of borders and your design is also needed. Note that the color of the border matches the red divider line on the wall, and it looks like a frame that would hang on the wall. This border works well with the chosen design. Your entire script does not go on the slide for all to see. Including it here in your presenter notes is okay, but don't rely on this. People get bored fast if you are just reading off a screen or note cards. Too much text on a slide makes it hard to read, and no one wants to hear you read what they can read for themselves on the slide. Blank space is equally boring, so position your content so it breaks up all that blank space when possible. I know these last two ideas contradict each other a bit, but it is possible to find a nice balance between too much and not enough. Just like in your papers, you must cite the sources of any quotes you may use. Pictures are nice and they can communicate a lot of information, so limit them to a few per slide. Also remember to cite the sources of your images too, even if they are from your previous work, otherwise you may accidentally plagiarize yourself. And yes, that is actually a problem. If you include a video, be sure to mention how it relates to your work but don't repeat what it says. They do speak for themselves after all. On the previous slide, the quote was tiny and hard to read. Turning the quote into its own slide solves that problem well. Don't read the quote either, as the audience can do that for themselves. Instead, focus on how it relates to your presentation. There are a ton of image file types you can use with PowerPoint, and each has its benefits and drawbacks. The higher resolution your image file is, the better it works when projected to the size of wall screens or the clearer it is on a monitor. Using better images avoids fuzzy or pixelated images. PowerPoint also has a lot of image editing options. Crop, resize, recolor, set transparent color, and many more. You can even change the base color of the images. This can come in handy to turn one into a background by muting its colors or turning it into a faded black and white photo. I really suggest you play with these features before your project so you can see all the options you have. Don't add too many images to a single slide, as this can overwhelm your audience. In other words, don't do what I did on this slide. It is better to use fewer photos 
and some key style and editing features to highlight the portions of your image that you want your audience to focus on. You can even use shapes to circle or point to features you are going to explain. You can insert all kinds of files into a PowerPoint presentation. When using Word, documents do not include the entire document. Just a quote or one screenshot of the piece that is relevant to your project. No one wants to read an entire paper using PowerPoint slides when they are sitting in the back of the crowded room. You can also provide a link or downloadable version of the Word document you are referring to. This way, your audience can read it on their own time if they want to. Excel spreadsheets are not designed well for presentations. Make sure if you include one that you choose a style that is easy to read from a distance. Options that like alternatively colored lines and blank lines help greatly. The exception to this is Excel charts and graphs. They are practically made for presentations and you can simply copy and paste them into your PowerPoint project. Adobe files do not always play nice with PowerPoint, but they still work. Sometimes it is easier to take a screenshot of the open PDF file and insert it as a picture into your PowerPoint. This gets past some of the technical difficulties. Recording your presentation in PowerPoint is really easy. I recommend recording the audio for each slide separately and naming the recordings to match the slide title or number. This way, you do not have to record your entire presentation at once. And if you make a mistake, you only have to redo the single slides recording and not your entire presentation. If you choose to have background music, be sure it does not distract from your presentation and that you give credit to its creator by citing your source. Animations are very effective in getting your audience's attention. I mean, really, that is their entire purpose. Use the more dramatic animations sparingly, as they may draw too much attention and become a distraction instead of a help. Simple and consistent is best. If you have all your slide titles fade in, for example, this is a simple and consistent use of animation. Also, using a set animation or two throughout your presentation is better than using many different animations. Like all other attention-getting devices we've talked about, make sure to use animations that fit your presentation. Shaking, teetering, and bouncing could be bad choices for architecture. Unless you're explaining earthquake resistance, maybe? One important thing to keep in mind with animations that may not seem relevant to a presentation is that some health conditions can be aggravated by animations. Flashing colored text or shapes can trigger seizures in folks with certain health conditions, and spinning or swirling images or text can trigger nausea or dizziness in others. Pro tip, don't nauseate your audience. It's just far simpler to avoid these kinds of animations. If you still do not believe that this can happen, just Google Pokemon Seizure Episode for proof. Scripts are important. They help you organize your thoughts and guide your presentation, ensuring it stays on topic and on schedule. Use a conversational tone, or in other words, no big fancy words, unless that is how you normally talk. If you have difficulty saying a segment, your audience will have more difficulty understanding it. Avoid jargon and acronyms when possible. And if you must use them, explain them and how they relate to your topic. Just like other writing projects, scripts should have drafts. You should practice and edit your script as needed until it sounds right. Writing tutors can be helpful. They can proofread your script with you and a second set of eyes or ears never hurts. Your script needs to stay on target too. Trim any unnecessary topics or segments out. Going off script often leads to longer presentations and shifting topics. So do your best to stick to your script. When recording audio, you can and should go back and edit out errors. When presenting to a live audience, you do not have that luxury. Own your mistakes if you make them, clarify and correct yourself if you need to, and just roll with it. As they say, the show must go on. As the old saying goes, practice makes perfect. 
The more you practice your script, the more comfortable you will be saying it. Try to avoid reading it, and the less mistakes you will make. Audiences can tell when you are faking it. Knowing your material, script, and topic is a good idea. If you just stand there and read what is on your slides, you will have the most boring presentation ever. Slides have key points. You have information. Expand on the points on your slides. Explain why they are relevant to your topic. Doing this will keep your audience's attention going between you and your slides. This shifting focus helps keep their attention on you and your presentation. Keep your audience engaged. This is a lot easier in live presentations. Have a Q&A session between major topic changes. Ask questions that relate to your presentation of the audience members. Answer any questions your audience may have about the material so far. Giving relevant real world examples that your audience can relate to is always a good idea. Just Google Norman doors to see some examples. Everyone understand doors, right? So everyone can relate. The more practice you have delivering your presentation, the more comfortable you will be when you are in front of your audience and your audience can pick up on that fact. They will feel more confident in your knowledge of the topic, so they will pay attention more. Note, professional presentations are not dramas, so do not be dramatic to get your audience's attention. Astound them with your level of professionalism and topic knowledge instead. For those recording video presentations, feel free to edit and rearrange segments for better flow of ideas and cut anything that is not on topic. People's attention spans are remarkably short when it comes to video presentations. Many people learn in different ways or have disabilities that limit their ability to see, hear, or otherwise prevent them from fully understanding you and your presentation. Always include closed captioning and video recordings like the ones in this video. YouTube and Panopto do have an automated closed caption option for your uploaded movies. It takes about a day to process, so plan ahead so you don't miss your deadlines. Also, double check any automated closed captioning services as they often make mistakes. They are known to misunderstand you and type in the wrong words to disastrous, embarrassing, or possibly humorous effects. Uploading your script and adjusting its closed captioning timing so it follows along with your video will ensure that there are no translation errors. Basic fonts scale well when projecting on a screen or using enlargement software on a computer video. Fancy or funky fonts do not. If curious, this presentation uses Arial. Low quality images go fuzzy or pixelated when enlarged too much. You can test this yourself using the view zoom option. Go to a higher zoom percent and see what your images look like. The most common form of color blindness is red green. And an easy solution is to not use those colors for fonts or graphics where the distinction between them is important and may be missed. Amazingly, there is a font that helps those with dyslexia. It is freely available online. This is probably best to have as a separate script and presentation download since this font may not be magnification friendly. If your background music is too loud, it may distract those with ADHD and it also makes it hard to hear you over the music. I suggest music no louder than 8% volume during the speaking segments. Be sure to allow others to download or somehow receive a copy of your script, slides, and if possible, a recording of your presentation. This is useful for people who need special software to interpret for them. Use whatever service you want, as long as people can retrieve a copy if they need it. I can't say this enough. Practice your presentation. The more you practice, the better you get. The better you get, the better your presentation will be, and the more engaged your audience will be. Practicing in front of a friend, family member, or other audience lets you get feedback on what works and what doesn't. This way you can make changes before you present live or record your final version. Your presentation will have a time limit. If you are making a video recording, you will know exactly how long your speech is as recording software times your videos. Practicing your presentation ahead of time will let you know if you are under or over on your time. This also gives you the time you need to add or remove segments if necessary. Your presentation style should vary based on the kind of presentation you are making. Always keep your assignment handy. Print it out if that helps. Use it as a guide for creating your presentation. Be sure to compare your completed project with your assignment requirements. Did you cover everything? Have answers to common questions on the topic ready. Thinking about this will help you prepare to answer any questions your audience may have. Also be ready to explain your position or point of view on the topic. This will help others understand where you're coming from if they have questions. Tips for your how-to presentation. Keep your steps simple and easy to understand. Flowcharts can help if there are a lot of if steps in your instructions. And mind maps can show the connection between the various parts of your topic. 
Remember, your audience will not know what you know about the topic. Keep your language simple and easy to understand. Avoid technical terms, jargon, and abbreviation. These are all confusing to people new to the topic. Engineering scenes in Star Trek always break this rule. If you must use technical terms or abbreviations, please explain what they are and how they relate to your topic. Speak as if you were explaining a topic to a new student. Remembering how you were taught may help with this. A layout of pictures that show each step to completion can be very helpful to anyone trying to follow along. Your final presentation is all about showing what you have learned. Yes, that is a lot, but you have a topic and a script. Stick to them. Stick to the language you know and the terms you understand. Showing relevant examples of your work will confirm your knowledge about the topic. Explain how you have grown and learned more about the topic over the duration of the course. Give examples of the sources you use to stay up to date with changes in the field. This shows that you know where to look to keep up to date, and it may also give new sources to your audience. Dress as a professional in your field would dress when in the office or at work. You know this topic. You have learned about it in class. You have done projects on it. You have prepared this entire presentation about it. Speak with that level of confidence and calm. Again, practice helps with this part. You made it. You finished your presentation and listened to and possibly responded to comments from the audience members. I am sure you had a mix of comments and concerns with some positive and others negative. These are all constructive criticism. Do not forget the word constructive in that statement. In class, this is even more important to keep in mind. Critics may point out all the mistakes in your work, but they do that so you learn to see them, figure them out, and fix them. You are learning from the criticisms of your work and you will be less likely to make the same mistakes again. Learning how to take criticism and see things from the critic's point of view is a part of any job. Any questions you have about your project should be directed to your instructor. Any questions you have about this presentation can be sent to me. My contact information is on this slide. Thank you. Have a great day.